Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're gonna wrap up Charmed. Um, we're gonna start by laying in the inside liners, then we're gonna add the pages, and then the last thing we're gonna do is um, the cover. Okay, so I think I've got these things trimmed. So we're gonna um, split this. This is from Patterns and Solids, and this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna go like this. There's gonna be a gap. That gap is gonna be filled by this strip. Uh, and this is also from the 12 by 12. Oof, I'm doing laundry and the lint got to me. <laughs> oh shoot. Didn't mean to do that. Probably have to add some more glue. One nice thing about the tape, uh, well, there's several things, but one of the nice things is um, it's it's pretty darn thin, so you don't have to worry about there being a different level. This is much thicker. The cardstock's much much thicker than um, the uh, tape, so you don't have to worry about bringing this up to the same level. strip right here. I think that makes for a nice uh, layout. Easy to put some photos on there and this is a large format for larger photos or for an array. I could see um, like your pumpkin patch pictures being here and then more of the trick-or-treat pictures being um, inside the album toward the end. This would have been a pretty uh, flap on top of a pocket, too. Okay, got this piece. It's inked. Now, where is my... Mm, I had another one that I'd already trimmed down. Here it is. running into my uh, supplies because it's so wide.
Okay, I'm gonna lay this in and just test it real quick. Looks good. ready to put our pictures, our pictures, our um, pages in. So let me grab those. Here we go. I'm going to verify that they're in the right order. And then we're going to install them. Okay, page one, two, three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight all set. Looks pretty good. We are on the last page. So it looks like there should be, you know, a fair amount of room for photos in here. But again, I definitely want to hear from you guys about your experience when you're working with these albums. Okay, this is my handy dandy jar of cream, which I normally put in here to space it, but I only do that when, when there's no papers in it. So I'm going to stack up some tape inside just to hold this flat while I decorate it. This is from the 12 by 12 collection. It's going to be the base for our cover.
by the way, um, I'm at, I'm linking, am I going to be out of the hinge? I think so. I'm linking, um, the uh, eight and a half by ten and a half build to this project. Um, but I've actually used the construction tape. So, um, Claire Chevelle, um, my creative spirit is her channel has some tutorials on how to use the construction tape. Um, the, the hinge build is exactly the same, but instead of wrapping it with cardstock, you're using this black tape on, along the edge. And I like both processes for different reasons. Um, I feel like the when you wrap it with paper, it just makes it feel more rigid and secure. This definitely has a lot of play in it, although I haven't had any issues with it. So it's just a different kind of thing. Um, but I've been using it uh, on a lot of my albums because we now sell it and I want to, you know, have some experience with it if it's something we're selling. And I have a lot of experience with the other process. So if that's confusing, just leave me a note and I'll try to clarify it. Um, but like I said, Claire Chevelle, my creative spirit, is the provider of this tape and she has some tutorials on how to use it and she's more adept at it than I am that's why I haven't produced a video using it myself because I even though it turns out nice I, I feel like I really have to work hard and it's hard for me to do it over the table versus underneath you know closer to me and as a crafter I'm sure you guys can appreciate some of that so I think if I was trying to do it you'd mostly just get a pretty good view of the top of my head Okay, so for the back, I'm going to do the same thing, which I hadn't turned it down yet. Let's see, that should be right. Yes, so I'm going to ink it and lay it down. I'm using mahogany, which is my go-to, especially with Graphic 45 collections. If it has a white base in the pattern itself, I don't ink at all, but um, any other color I like to ink because the core is always gonna be white. But if it's um, like my last collection or the Stamperia, You and Me, there was a lot of white in the collection, so I don't think it stands out so much. And I also put it on a white cardstock. I might have considered inking it if I was putting it on black or some other color other than bright white. Okay. I thought I trimmed this down enough. Yeah, it's pretty tight. It's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to see the edges because there's so much black in the paper itself. Okay, that looks good. So we need something for the spine. And that'll be the end of it. Well, that's not true. We'll decorate the cover. Kind of lends itself to bright to the orange, so that's what I'll do. I don't like the black. It just doesn't show up enough against the the base album. Let's see. Oops, we did that wrong. It needs to be eight and a half. <laughs> Is that gonna work? Yes, it will. Okay. This needs to be a little more. directional so it doesn't matter. Let's 
Somebody must be out front. My dog's going bonkers. and see if there's something we should be putting on the back here. I like this, but it's too wide. She's about the cutest little thing ever. Hmm. I wish I had an oval this way. But it doesn't look like I, ah, I do. I have this. And I like it. That's what we're gonna do. So I need to uh, trim off my little edges, which you can either file off with an emery board or I use my little um, fussy cut scissors to get most of it. And then I'll ink my edges and we'll lay this down. And the cover's pretty simple because I uh, matted two ephemera cards, or one cut apart, one ephemera card. So there's not a lot of fussy cutting. Um, which is nice for a change. I'm sure it gets old. It does for me, my hands get worn out. I like the results, but my hands aren't happy with me in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna lay them down together, but you can put a little lit, um, piece of chipboard behind the oval and pop it up a little, but I'm gonna leave it flat. You don't wanna to go too crazy on the spine because it needs to lay flat as you open the pages, right? I like this image so much that it's gonna be on the front. <laughs> okay, there's our spine, that should be good take my tape out okay now I'm flat again pretty flat okay so here is what I chose this is the cut apart from the 12 by 12 collection and then this is one of the ephemera cards I put uh, cardstock on back of both and then somebody was asking me about how I do my chipboard this happened to be a rectangular piece that I hadn't cut down to size when it's something that's fussy cut um, what I typically do is I'll take um, the, the thinner, smaller pieces that I have, and I actually do cut it with scissors. I don't shape it too much. So I'll either cut rectangles, and then if I've got something um, that's a little bit more sophisticated, I, I might cut like an edge like this. Um, but I don't do rounded edges. I just can't manage that with these old hands. So I just use my scissors. Um, when I'm cutting chipboard for my project itself, um, oftentimes I'm gonna put the weight of this book on the on that piece that we just glued to the spine. Um, I, I use a um, uh, metal ruler and a box cutter. And uh, usually I try to go to a counter height and stand and trim because it just it's easier to get more weight behind it um, than sitting over your desk. So. I oftentimes cut a bunch of my chipboard and have it just ready in the eight and a half by eight and a half and the uh, eight and a half by ten and a half ready to go. So this one has a layer of chipboard behind it. This one doesn't at the moment because I just want to lay things out, get a good look at what we're doing. This is cut from the signature page of the collection. This is a mat that I'm planning to put behind this, and then I've got another mat that I'm gonna put behind this. And I think that really um, brings in some interesting colors there. I've got a piece of chipboard. I don't like this one, but I had a little piece of chipboard. It was purple. I don't know where it went. That chipboard, I mean decorative chipboard. We've got the boo, which I kind of like, but it's just so close to the background, I think it kind of disappears. Here it is, I dropped it on the floor. 
got this uh, Obats I'm gonna put down here. So this is the um, pretty much the layout. So the first thing I'm gonna do is glue these things onto their mats. And I'll tell you what size the mat is. This mat is four and three eighths by six and three eighths. Four and three eighths by six and three eighths. And then I added my designer paper and then we'll add our four by six ephemera card. The next thing we'll do is this one. This one I wanted a bigger border because it's just fun and I just really kind of want it to jump off the page for us. So I, when I do my borders, one of the things I like to do, or my chipboard in the back, is leave space all the way around the edge. So if I want to tuck something under it, I can. Um, and also it helps hide the chipboard itself so that it's not the first thing you see when you turn it on its side. Another way to avoid that is to have, if you're building a black album, have black chipboard, but I don't. I always have just the um, the craft color because I can wrap that with anything. I can use it with white, cream, or black. You can't use black chipboard with white paper. It shows through. Okay, so the Charmed, there's an example of where I just did two thin strips. These happen to be strips that I had cut off um, the long side of um, one of the uh, chipboard, larger chipboard pieces that I was getting ready to use for something else. So even the thin ones save. These ones are really easy to snip into small pieces and, and get them to fit into some of the curves of anything that you fussy cut. So that is pretty much the layout. So the question now is, I've popped these two things, do I wanna pop that? And by the way, this, this is popped from the background. So if I pop this, the background will travel with it. And I like both, they're just different. I think I'm gonna lay it down flat. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. I like to mention on the cover, it, it pulls you in and you know makes you wanna open the book. But if you get too bulky, um, it doesn't want to lay flat as you open the pages. So you, some things to consider. Okay. down here it needs something in this little spot okay now I'm gonna open up my charms and see what's in here see what, uh, what kind of goodies we have to work with we definitely have some corners Here's a cute little pumpkin. Look at that witch's hat. That's awesome. I like this pumpkin. Two pumpkins. We've got a moon. A house, a cat, and a bat goes that way. Well, 
Well, yeah, I do have a little witch on a broom, but she's too small. Okay, I kind of like this broom. So I, I like to take this off. So I use these nippers. Now, if you're going to hang it, of course, you want to hang on to that, but I'm going to cut it off and glue it on the cover. I, I don't know. It's some kind of an alloy, and it's got to have a lot of lead in it because it's so soft. It takes almost no effort to trim it. Not crazy about that. I really like this pumpkin, so I think I'm going to put it here. And then there's a little bit of metal showing. So I'll just, I just add ink to it. Softens it up. You can still tell it's there, but it's not so bad. Do I want it here or here? I think I want it here. You have to be patient. Um, the glue and the metal don't really like each other. It takes a long time for it to dry, but it will. And I've never had a charm fall off. So sometimes you have to add a little extra glue because there's so much texture. They're not completely flat backed. There we go. Let, leave that alone. And then we still have our little moon piece. Not sure what I want to do with that. And then we have corners. So do I want to put corners on here? Yes, I like that. I think it's gonna disappear over here. So I'm gonna add a corner here. It wants to stick to me more than the paper. I'm going to bend it back a little bit. There we go. Messy. And I have another small one. I don't know if I need it. I guess I'll go ahead and use it. It doesn't really show up much. I don't like it there. And remember, all my white glue is going to dry clear. Then we have these large corners, which I don't care for on this. It's too busy. So I'm going to leave these out. And then I still do have a bunch of really cute uh, charms that um, would look really good hanging um, from some chain if you guys wanted to further embellish your spine. Uh, I'm gonna call it, um, I'm gonna call it finished. I might add some black ribbon. I've, uh, if you buy the bundle from us, you will get some black green ribbon. So I'm gonna see if I can't work that in, maybe somewhere down here and maybe stash a little bit behind here. If I do, I will cover that in the walkthrough. So that's it, everybody. That is um, Graphic 45's Charmed Collection. I hope you enjoyed. I'll be back shortly with the walkthrough.